Hello and welcome to my presentation on teaching game sense in physical education. My name's Ray Breed, I'm from Swinburne University in Melbourne, Australia. So the purpose of the session is to allow us to reflect on current practices and challenge our thinking and the program that we run at our schools. Think about what is best for our students and also this session is aiming at helping us better understand game sense and how to integrate it. The, uh, most of the material for um, this presentation is from the recent book from Braden Spittle, uh, Developing Game Sense in Physical Education and Sport, uh, published by Human Kinetics uh, in the US. So it's going to be divided into three parts. Firstly, we'll have a look at program outcomes and what it is that should drive our curriculum and our program. Part two is using the game sense or tactical method, and it's the game sense model as interpreted by us in the book and developing the curriculum in terms of content and pedagogy. Our main focus, though, in this presentation will be on the content uh, which makes up uh, our curriculum. So let's start with a philosophical problem or a scenario whereby we might have a co-educational mixed ability year seven group. Uh, so that's about the age of 12 to 13 years of age of 25 students. So pretty busy class. Think about, are we then trying to aim throughout the year that we have that year seven class, are we trying to teach them all the skills of a catcher, of a pitcher, all the batting skills, all the fielding skills, what is it we're trying to achieve and what are our outcomes? And then tie that all back into well, how much actual time do we have? And it comes back to time versus reward. In other words, what are the students getting out of the time that we're able to put into them? And a key thing to reflect on, are do our practices match our outcomes and our philosophy? And an example of that is that so often our outcomes, our key outcomes are wanting the students to enjoy, uh, wanting them to develop tactical skills, but then we use a very much skill drill based approach. So if we come and look at some of the issues uh, in the PE curriculum, and I'm presenting today from an Australian point of view, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to modify and adapt it depending on whatever country you are in. So the most common problems um, that were deemed from year seven to 10 PE teachers. Coming out on top consistently is not enough time to teach all the skills, that there are lots and lots of different ones to teach. Again, that's linked back to our time. Students are not skilled enough to play games. That's a common one and one which I'd argue all the time um, that if we always consider that they're never skilled enough, we'd rarely ever play games. Engaging mixed ability groups and no transfer of the skill, in other words, do a lot of drill practice, that there's lack of transfer into the game scenarios. So the question here is, is it really possible to teach and learn every single skill that we want the students to learn? And a good way of reflecting on that is thinking of all the fundamental movement skills, the sport specific skills, the tactics and sports that we think we need to teach, Plus then we've got the health, well-being, fitness, all of those things that we're trying to squeeze into a curriculum. And on top of that, and I'm pretty sure the US is very similar in terms of that we have only around about 15% of students in secondary schools that meet physical activity guidelines. So it is very low. So what's a potential solution? Well, when teachers are asked to list what they want to get out of physical education. Interestingly, technical skills doesn't come up near the top. Fun and enjoyment consistently is always the number one. Developing social skills, student values, then we get tactical skills and technical skills. So we need to think back again, do our practices match our outcomes and our philosophies? And a way that we can Teach games then is using a game sense approach or a tactical approach and then integrating that into a thematic 
curriculum. Why we're looking at Game Sense and also a thematic curriculum approach, and they tie in nicely together, is that it's a really good way of teaching efficiently and effectively. If we look at the next part, and that is looking at what the Game Sense model is, um, and it's an instructional approach for teaching and learning that really has three key aims. The first one is a development of tactics and strategy, developing technical skills, particularly in relation to the game, so importance of, of linking it to the context of games, but most importantly, enhancing the personal, social and relationship skills of students. And that can be done through as small-sided games, providing students with leadership opportunities um, and all of those types of things, similar to what we might be used to in a Sport Ed or CPEP model. Putting that into, you know, what our key learning outcomes could be, well, again, we've got our skills, but technical, tactical and strategic skills. Knowledge, declarative, which is the student's knowledge about a game, how it's played, the rules, why you use certain skills, and contextual is the ability to be able to apply the knowledge into things like tactics and strategies. And then again, important, importantly, the personal and social relationships. Those three learning outcomes link nicely and closely into the Game Sense model or the Game Sense approach. And then we need to develop suitable assessment that reflects on those learning outcomes. And that's quite often from a PE teacher perspective, observation, but aligned to a rubric. Um, it could be questions or um, looking, or again, observation as to how students understand uh, the content. And then again, looking at self and personal reflection or observation. Again, the knowledge and the skills are very closely related. So generally students will need good knowledge here in order to have good skills and vice versa. So they are quite reciprocal by nature. If we look at the Game Sense model, um, then we have a content. So it's made up of both content and pedagogy. In this presentation, we're going to focus predominantly on the content and how it is a thematic content approach. The game categories, or the way that we categorise our games and activities, are into three key themes of invasion games, striking fielding games, and net and wall games. So how we get to that next point and how we categorise our games and then how we teach it becomes really important. And the advantage of a thematic game sense approach is it's a really efficient way of addressing our key outcomes that we've just looked at and addressing a really crowded curriculum. In other words, we want to try and teach everything. You know, we want to try and teach a bit of every single sport, you know, health issues, uh, fitness, all of these types of things. But by putting it into themes and we're looking at being able to then teach transfer or skill transfer um, within each game category. This is a nice way to show that. So if we have a look firstly at invasion games, where one of our key focus areas is being able to keep possession of the ball, then we can see how that links back to fundamental motor skills and sport specific skills. So quite often I'll teach invasion games in uh, key categories of throwing and catching skills then another invasion unit perhaps that involves kicking skills. There's some small sided games that we can use to address the key game concepts in invasion games and some sports here that are linked or related to invasion games. So the concept behind thematic game sense approach is that we don't try and teach a unit of netball and apologies to um, US who might not understand um, uh, netball is a, a, a really uh, common game in Australia, a, a little bit like basketball. Corfball, basketball, team handball, and there's lots and lots of other invasion games. If we then look at striking fielding game, where one of the key concepts is to maximise our running time, so by hitting the ball into space, 
Again, key sports, rounders, cricket, another another um, common Australian game, softball and baseball. But again, instead of teaching a separate unit for each, we combine the strategies, the tactics and the skills and combine them into one thematic unit. Similar principle in net and wall, table tennis, badminton, squash, tennis, volleyball are all examples of net and wall uh, games. So the idea is that instead of teaching in separate sports, we're teaching game themes, uh, skills, strategies, etc., that are common throughout all of those and putting them into one game category. So the idea is that we're looking at similarities between many games, which helps to save time. It allows students to understand the skill transfer between different sports and skills and then allows sampling of a variety of lots of little games. So some curricula may involve long sport specific units, therefore there's little sampling of or variety for students. This table might look a bit complex to start with, but this is actual curriculum time um, from a school here in Melbourne in Victoria. So what are our limitations? Before we plan a curriculum, we have to consider well, what are our limitations? And the number one limitation that people say is time. Then we also have to think about what facilities we have, the staff and the staff expertise and the knowledge that we have uh, within our, our teaching group and the level of student engagement that we have. So if we just take a typical year five class around about the age of 11 at this particular school, one and a half sessions per week devoted to PE. Now they also do, um, and I'm not sure how similar this is in the US, um, but the students also do sport each week as well. So that's where they choose a specific sport and they're coached on those specific skills. But we're just here talking about physical education where the outcomes should be different to the sport outcomes, but they should link nicely together. So 80 minutes in a what's known as a double period, so one and a half is 120 minutes or two hours per week, times the 35 weeks, that's taking out holidays and things, that actually only gives us 70 hours in one year level but then we have to consider, well, they've got to get time for changing, moving to the area and so on. On average, there was a survey done and um, only 50 to 60% of the actual allocated curriculum time is spent on the students being active. And that comes down to that means we have only 42 hours a year in physical education. And again, I'd be so interested to see how that aligns, say, with the US um, yeah, you know, it's quite similar, I know, to the, to the UK curriculum as well. So from here, once we know our limitations, particularly relating to time, we can then develop our outcomes, develop our content and what units we're going to run. And as I said, today is really thinking about can we run our units in thematic uh, units rather than trying to do lots and lots of little separate sport units and then how we would link assessment back to that. Again, here's another little problem to think about. Um, let's assume that we have 36 lessons total for the year. We know that there are, if you've read a lot of the research with traditional models, that's where it's a, a real skill drill based approach where we pick a sport, we practice an individual skill within that sport. So it might be dribbling a basketball around cones and so on. Then we play a modified game at the end of that lesson. So that's the traditional model rather than teaching predominantly from small sided games. So think about some of the issues we have with that traditional model and that there's no often no sense of mastery or improvement within that. So the key questions are, is it possible for students to learn and retain every skill within every sport? And in a moment, I'm gonna get you to have a really good close look at this traditional sport-based curriculum and see if we wanted to turn that into a thematic-based curriculum, what could we do with that? And there's a lot of assumptions involved with this curriculum that we're looking at right now. 
And again, reflecting back, is it possible for students to learn all the rules and master all the skills of each individual sport in just four, five or six lessons? Then also be encouraged to take up a given sport in the future. So quite often students may do five or six lessons of a sport, then never ever do it again or never or have no interest in it whatsoever. So at this point, let's think about some of the potential issues and assumptions that have been made within this curriculum here. Okay, so have a look at it, see if you can think of any things that you can see or that you'd improve in that. So now's a good time to pause it, have a look. Okay, and welcome back if you're assuming you've paused it and had a look. Let's have a look at a few things here. Um, we could argue this, this could be a whole presentation on its own, but in terms of, there's an assumption, okay, well, we do four lessons of fitness at the start of each year level. That's fine, but the only problem is that with that is, okay, well, if they don't do anything else for the rest of the year in fitness, well, are they actually really improving? So often we'll do some fitness testing in year seven. The students don't do any more specific work aimed at fitness they come back and they're probably going to be fitter in year eight just through natural development, not necessarily through what we're teaching them. Okay. And then a few other things that might jump out at you is if we're trying to teach every sport, it's impossible to teach it longitudinally across different year levels. And I've just highlighted three there. Uh, let's say a student in Australia, often schools are set up in terms of through to preparatory or kindergarten through to year six a primary school and then into a secondary school starting at year seven, which is about the age of 12 or 13. So if students haven't had much exposure to that, we're expecting a student in five lessons to play and develop their skills in soccer and then they never see it again. So you can see there's a few issues with trying to present um, every individual separate sport to students. So if we wanted to try and put that into a, some sort of thematic approach, here's one where I've pretty much or we've written down almost every sport that we can think of or that's been taught somewhere in a, uh, in a curriculum in Australia. Then the step from here would be, okay, well, how can we start to group them into likes? In other words, areas that involve similar sorts of skills where students can get transfer from uh, within the within the thematic category. So if you have a look, there's some pretty clear ones where I've put a number one, things like basketball, you know, uh, American football or football, uh, handball, hockey, etc. And they are known as invasion games. You'll see twos link into net and wall games, threes link into striking fielding games. And then we have a variety of sort of sports and bits and pieces left over. So how can we group those together? And then we're going to work out where do we fit those into a curriculum over a longer period of time. So number four, you could cl I've just classify it as recreational sports or you could target games or sports for life. Five, yeah, these are becoming, cycling's really popular um, you know, around the world now um, from mountain biking to road riding um, and so on which are called physically active sports for life. So cycling, some form of athletics, masters games and athletics and swimming are really huge here um, and so on. And then six, we've got um, movement skills such as, you know, dance uh, and gymnastics. And then other things like fitness and conditioning, ball skills and handling, we can look at ways to really integrate those within all of our other units. So for example, you know, when we're doing an invasion games unit, we can integrate fundamental motor skills of throwing and catching within those units. Um, uh, yeah, we can always integrate our fitness and conditioning throughout units as well. So it may be doing a unit, uh, doing 10 to 15 minutes in the middle or at the end, wherever it might be, just with a little strength, um, yeah, a body type circuit, that type of thing. So... Think about what we just saw and now how we could perhaps put that into a what we call a middle years curriculum, year five, six, seven, and eight, or from around the ages of sort of nine to 14. We can see we've started to now put them into thematic units. And it's good to now see that we've got 
an approach where it's longitudinally so they don't just have a topic in one year and then forget about it or move on we build on skills and knowledge from year five into six into seven into eight we can use virtually the same small-sided games but we modify the games depending on the level of development of each of this or of the students or the groups that we have all right, and you can see how we've started to classify those into um, themes and we start to use them across a number of years rather than just one year level. The question that's often asked are things like, well, when, when and do I teach fundamental motor skills? When do I teach game sense? There's not a really easy response for that. In the ideal world, we'd have all the students mastering all the fundamental movement skills you know, applying them to sports and then really strengthening their knowledge, tactics and strategic learning in games. But the, unfortunately, we don't have the time to do that within PE curriculum. So there's a lot of overlap. That said, our major focus in the younger years should be development of key fundamental movement skills like throwing, catching, running, jumping and so on. That will then overlap into students understanding how they link into sports specific elements and then game sense um, you know from sort of the ages of 9 to 16 is the predominant focus area that's not to say then that if students haven't mastered fundamental movement skills that they can't play small-sided games and be involved in games they can all right it may look a bit messy um, it may not look exactly how we want it to look but they will still develop a lot of other skills from playing small-sided games. So within that, we can still develop technical ta and alongside our technical, sorry, alongside our tactical and um, strategic skills. We also then start getting the students to think about, and this is sort of aligned to the Canadian and the UK long-term athlete development model as well, where the students will tend to start thinking towards competitive sport or recreational type sport all right? and that's also a factor to consider from sort of the ages of 12 onwards. So how does that look in a longitudinal thematic curriculum? Here's a little bit of an example. So we can see that early years you know up to year four or sort of up to the age of nine or ten years of age is a really strong focus on individual skill development or fundamental movement skills an overlap there in that sort of year three to four area and then looking at fundamental motor skills applied to games and tactics and a thematic game sense starting with an overlap with the fundamental motor skills back here um, from years five onwards. Meanwhile, within our curriculum, um, you know, we're still teaching skills like swimming and water safety. That's an, that's an area that's placed with such a high importance here in Australia. Movement skills such as gym and dance, and athletic activities as well. Then uh, as we get from year nine onwards, start students thinking about uh, sports specific game sense and CPEP, so sport education models, active for life and recreational activities. And as what sorts of sports and activities are they going to then wanna pursue in the community or later on in life? So that's a nice little summary as to how we can put all of that into a curriculum. So just to conclude the presentation, time is always going to be an issue whenever we're planning our curriculum. So thinking about a thematic approach is a really good and effective, efficient way to be able to develop a PE curriculum. What is your school and faculty philosophy and what are the outcomes? So that will help guide our, um, our curriculum as well. Think about the need to develop fundamental movement skills uh, up to the age of nine and then start to integrate you know more tactical skills and game sense um, ideals within the curriculum structuring it around game concepts and strate strategies around what we call the sort of middle years from sort of grades um, particularly five six seven and eight uh, again you know thinking about do we still need to teach by sport? Do we still need to try and teach every single sport and every single technique and so on in every sport? Or can we start to teach it more effectively within thematic units? Then we've got issues of integrating health within physical education. 
And then we also think of how can it link into the sport programs that the students do. So as I said in here, students usually pick a winter sport and a summer sport and they play that. Well, how can we supplement that within PE? Um, how can we uh, get the students thinking about the skills that they learn in HPE can help them within their sports? So thanks again, everyone, for listening. And I wish you all the best in your teaching. Uh, that, as I said, today's material came from uh, this book, which was brought out this year from Human Kinetics. Feel free to please email me with any questions. Uh, always love to chat about curriculum and game sense in particular. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.